Hi, this is T.H. Culhane for Solar Cities, and I would like today to show you how we make our signature Home Depot bucket biodigesters, which are an analog to the IBC tank biodigesters that we've been deploying around the world. And they're very simple, they're the same concept. We use the I love you sign to indicate how to teach biodigesters. You've got a stomach represented by my hand, and then the I is the input pipe for putting your feedstock, your ground up food scraps. The L is your outlet pipe where you put your liquid fertilizer, that's where that goes out. And then you have the index finger sticking up, which is your gas pipe indicating the gas going up. So three pipes and a stomach, and it doesn't matter what the stomach is. It can be a Home Depot bucket, paint bucket, paint can, it can be an IBC tank, it can be uh, some kind of uh, ceramic or clay or leather or cement uh, or steel drum, any kind, anything that'll hold water basically with three pipes will make a biodigester. This is a very simple one that you can try at home and when you've done this you can use the same uniseals uh, with your IBC tank. So we use the same size uniseals and the same size pipes, they're just shorter. And to show you how simple it is, you've got a bucket, I throw uh, I throw pistachio shells uh, down at the bottom for surface area. You can use gravel. It's a bit heavier. Pistachio shells work well. Uh, anything that, that will uh, create surface area down at the bottom of the bucket. But from the lid, all you're doing is putting three uniseals into the lid. So you're cutting three inch holes for the two inch uniseals. You can use a three inch pipe with a four inch hole and a three inch uniseal for the feed pipe if you like. But uh, two works fine. And you cut these three holes and you pop the uniseal in and you put axle grease or RTV silicone uh, as a sealant when you pop the uniseal in. And then you take these three different pipes and the pipes are, <clears throat> these two pipes are the same length and this one is shorter. These two pipes are the feed pipe and the gas out pipe. They're the same height. And then the fertilizer out pipe is a little bit shorter. You can tell the difference because this one here the feed pipe has a tapered cut at the bottom, so there's an angle here so the food can slide out into the bucket. We also made an additional hole up here so that if a sludge layer developed, it wouldn't impede the food from getting out. It would still be able to escape here. And that faces toward the center of the bucket. And then we have the, uh, the slurry pipe, the shorter one, which has a hole at about halfway up the bucket. So when I put it down like this, you can see that hole is about halfway uh, in the bucket. And then we have the gas out pipe, and the gas out pipe has its hole right up at the top where the uniseal is, so that as gas builds up, it can escape and go up the gas pipe. Um, to put the pipes through the uniseals, you have to use either soap and make it really slippery, or use rubbing alcohol. The advantage of rubbing alcohol is that it evaporates and so it doesn't get all greasy in your hands. Once you push the uniseal through, it's gone and you have a nice clean pipe. It's a bit more expensive, sometimes harder to find. Most people have dish soap and as long as you uh, have a towel around, you can put this dish soap around and then push that uniseal through. And the way we've designed ours is that when you do push the pipes through, all three of them go all the way to the bottom, so you don't have to worry about how far to push. You just push them until they touch the bottom. The only critical thing is that for the gas out, make sure that the outlet is not up in the uniseal where it could possibly leak, but it's not too low. So you really want that gas out to be right up, almost flush with the uniseal. Um, the placement of this fertilizer outlet hole doesn't really matter as long as it's below about half the tank so that the gas can build up here and not escape up there. This is supposed to be submerged in liquid. And then the food waste pipe has a, an ability for the food to slide in without getting clogged. That's all there is to it. And then you put it in, you want a, a lid that has an O-ring and you want to put axle grease in that O-ring when you seal it down so that you get a nice good seal. And that gives you your digester. Here's the digester actually operating and you can see the food pipe I've put a, uh, a four inch to two inch reducer so that I have something that I, as a funnel that I can pour the food waste into. Uh, the gas out has a reducer from two inch down to half inch so I can go to my gas valve and then to my barbed, uh, barbed nipple and then out to the gas bag. This is the Pusheen PVC gas holding bag and I'm gonna be setting this up right now 
I need to get a hose clamp to clamp the hose onto the bag. Uh, but we just use standard clear PVC hose for the gas out for the valve. And then here on the this uh, feeding, uh, sorry, this slurry pipe that I talked about, which is shorter, you'll see that I put a sewage tea, a sanitary tea, which is the cheaper tea, and then it comes out and goes through an elbow and then down into the slurry or fertilizer collection bucket. Because every time you feed it a cup of food waste, you're going to get a cup of fertilizer out. And then I have a reducer here to half inch with a hole. This hole serves two functions. One of the functions is that it allows us to prevent a siphoning because as you're feeding, if it was overflowing and it overflowed a lot, it might drain the tank. Not usually a problem with pipes this big, but it could. And then also the hole is there so that you can put your temperature probes from your Arduino data logger, which we're going to drop down in here. And if you needed to service it, you could put a stick down and remove any possible clogs. We also, bear in mind, we don't glue the gas holder on. Again, for the same reason, in case there was a jam, for some reason, if you're starting with horse manure or cow manure and some of the fibrous material gets up and clogs it, you can remove it. And it is gas tight. This PVC uh, is watertight and gas tight when it's just compression fitted like that. Um, so this is a great home experiment. You might get some leakage. Uh, you'll see little leaks sometimes as these pipes waggle. The axle grease helps with that. Uh, but do put a collection bucket underneath if you're doing this in the house so that you don't spill on the floor. And uh, this one has been loaded with the overflow from our IBC tanks at Mercy College. So there's active microbes in there. It's filled with water up to here and uh, doesn't seem to be leaking. But occasionally I do see when it moves a bit, uh, I, I keep a, a sponge handy for that. Um, because these are very... Uh, very flexible. That's the problem with these paint buckets. They're not ideal. The IBC tanks are a lot better, but it makes a nice school and home demonstration for an active biodigester. You would feed this about a cup of food waste a day once it starts producing biogas. Don't feed it before that. Start with inoculant, which is either from a biodigester that's working, or go ahead and put some animal manures in, let them sit for a couple weeks. Um, once it makes flammable gas, because it'll first be CO2, then you can start feeding about a cup a day, and then um, <clears throat> you should get about, well, this is a five-gallon jug. You might get two gallons of gas, maybe up to three, four gallons a day from this, which you can then use to do nice demonstrations or collect in a bag until you've got enough to cook with or make tea with. But please do try this at home. It's really simple. It's a quite effective way to get in the game. And once you've built one of these, all you got to do is scale it up, use the same uniseals and just longer pipes and put them in a much, much, much bigger tank. This could be, you know, a thousand liters, two thousand liters would be the same pipes. They'd just be longer, same uniseals. So it really does teach you a practical way to make a biodigester. I hope that's uh, clear. Join us uh, at solarcities.eu. That's our website, or on Facebook at SolarCitiesBiogas, or at BiogasCentral.net.